are you tired of the gritty texture and overpowering sweetness in traditional buttercream frosting recipe well today i have a game changing recipe just for you it requires just a handful of simple ingredients that you probably already have in your kitchen and simple recipe often needs little introduction about the ingredients so let's begin with that talking about ingredients for this recipe it is important to use unsalted butter just to clarify this is not a sponsored post i am simply showing the products i am using to address any confusion for new bakers you can use any brand of butter but make sure it's at room temperature ideally cube the butter and let it sit for 30 minutes to an hour depending on the weather what you are aiming for is a butter that is soft enough to slice it easily using just your finger as seen in the video As for the sweetener I'm using caster sugar in a granulated sugar tends to have a larger grain so I prefer to avoid it for baking however if you're watching this from any other part of the world granulated sugar will work perfectly fine for this recipe now the question arises I will let you know as to why as we proceed with the recipe further Moving on, we would need cream. I am using Amul Fresh Cream. I tried this recipe with Non Dairy Cream too. We'll talk about it as well further in the speed. You can also use heavy cream, half and half, double cream, any type of cream for that matter. If nothing is available, <laughs> to use milk or even water, the recipe would still work. Finally, to flavor the recipe, I'm using vanilla essence today. Now let's move on to making the actual recipe. In a saucepan, combine the sugar and cream and heat it over medium speed until the sugar completely dissolves. See, this is the reason why I asked you to use caster sugar or grind your granulated sugar because you do not want to lose any moisture from the cream. Now, I must be honest here, the cream that you are seeing in the video at this point is non-dairy whipping cream which didn't work well. So, for the final recipe, I am using fresh cream. I'll explain the difference short. Keep the flame low and stir continuously. Check if the sugar is fully dissolved. Note that the cream and sugar mixture at this point will be hot, so be careful by chipping it. If it is, then transfer the mixture to a white mouth. Mouth it about cover it tightly with a clean wrap ensuring that the wrap touches the surface to prevent the formation of any skin refrigerate it to cool down quickly meanwhile let's move on to beating the butter along with vanilla essence this step is crucial so please pay close attention place the measured butter in a mixing bowl and beat it with the hand mixer until it becomes pale almost white in color and incredibly creamy this process usually takes around 10 to 13 minutes depending on the initial softness of your butter it's important to be patient and not skip this step as it's during this beating process that a significant amount of air gets incorporated into the butter resulting in a light airy and fluffy texture if you have ever experienced your butter cream being heavy and lacking that cloud like consistency this step is the solution Finally, remember to scrape the sides of the bowl regularly to ensure even beating. After continuously beating for around 10 minutes, you will witness how the butter transforms into a creamy and soft texture. Take a look at the difference in color between the butter that we started with and the current result. It's truly fascinating, isn't it? And by now, the sugar and cream mixture would have cooled down too. So let's check on that. Now here's the one with non-dairy whipping cream. See how the sugar has crystallized upon cooling. If you incorporate this into the whipped butter, then you would again get gritty texture. That's what's the purpose of this whole recipe, right? And here is the one with fresh cream. Look how smooth it looks, almost like condensed milk. Talking about condensed milk, I do have a buttercream frosting recipe using condensed milk, which also tastes equally good. You can watch that recipe too after this one if you like. So let us now add this to our whipped butter in two batches and beat until stiff peaks form. Since the sugar and cream is in semi-solid form, unlike the ermine frosting where it is so much thicker due to the flour used, you might at times feel that the frosting is not thick enough. In that case, simply refrigerate the final frosting for 10 minutes, and you should be good to go. And we are done. Voila! Look at that fluffy and smooth frosting. This frosting pipes beautifully and also can be used to fill and frost a cake. Can I make this frosting ahead of time? Absolutely, you can make it a day prior. Simply transfer it to an airtight container or any dish like this and cover it with a cling wrap and refrigerate overnight. Next day, take it off the fridge to thaw and come to room temperature, and it would be fresh as new, as seen in the video.
This recipe makes a cup and a half to frost 12 cupcakes or fill and frost a 3 layer 6 inch cake or a 2 layer 8 inch cake. This is the cake I made using this frosting. But do note that the decoration on top is made using whipped cream. So the recipe makes enough to just fill and frost the cake. You might have to increase the quantity a bit depending on the design you are after. As taken towards this Gunner Smith recipe next as this doesn't call for the extra step of cooking so it is easier and quicker to make. That's it for this video. I'll see you soon in my next one. Until then this is Sushma signing off. Take care. Bye bye.